Happy fall, y'all. <laughs> Happy fall, y'all. <laughs> okay, getting getting comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Killer Queens here. Yep. I'm Torella. I'm Tori. Hi. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be a teeny tinier version of our teeny tinies. Yes. Of our cases that we cover fully on the podcast. Yes. The podcast. <laughs> um, and it's the teeny tinier because we suck at this and we're learning and we just recorded 12 minutes of no audio. So that was awesome. But we're learning and we're growing and we're loving and cherishing and cherishing and podcasting <laughs> um so we learned from that mistake hopefully so we're hoping for some audio this time okay yep. so this is this week on the podcast we're covering the i have i still haven't decided what i'm going to call it on the podcast but because i don't want to call it shirley turner because no. she's a bitch yes um who like doesn't even deserve to be named but um so it's because she is the murderer of Andrew Bagby and their son, Zachary Turner. She also killed herself. Yes. Um, so kind of the uh, story there, and we're going to, on the podcast, we dive into it. It's over an hour, so you really get everything. You can also watch the documentary, Dear Zachary. It's a uh, um, tearjerker. Yeah, you will sob your eyes out. Um, but... It covers the this entire case, which really, sh- I think it highlights her mental illness. Um, the fact that that really went untreated when it should have been. There were warning signs all yeah, over. Yeah, and um, the fact that she was a stalker, that she was violent, that um, she was already dangerous, and that that child no- should not have been in her care. So, on November the 5th, 2001, um, Shirley had just flown from Pennsylvania, visiting Andrew Bagby, back to her home in Council Bluffs, Iowa. He had just broken up with her when he dropped her off at the airport. That uh, just did not deter her. Yeah, (laughs) no. She was like, well, let's try this again. So, she drove like 1,300 miles back to his house and shows up at his front door at 5 30 in the morning and he's getting ready to go to work and so she says well let's meet after you get off work and him being the sweetheart that he is agreed even though yeah and his friend was like you know if if that had happened to me and this woman drove that far i would have been out the door and on the phone with the police and he's like look she's you know it's gonna be okay no big deal. I'll talk with her. I'll smooth it out. And then I'll be at your house at seven. I'll bring a couple beers over. He just, he really didn't, he didn't think that she was any kind of a threat or anything. Yeah. And um, they met in private at Keystone State Park, I think is a state park. Mm-hmm. And uh, she shot him five times and left him there. And he was still in his scrubs from being at work at the hospital all day. He still had his ID on him. His car was there. She peeled out and drove all the way back home. And uh, all of his friends and family were like, this is 100% Shirley. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it no did doubt not anyone's take, mind. Yeah. There's never been a question as to whether or not Shirley did this. There never ended up being a trial, but there is no question. She absolutely 100% killed him. Um, and we go over all the evidence. I mean, it's just she left a trail like you wouldn't believe. And um, then... A couple months later, so while they're kind of putting their case together, she flees to Canada, and because she was uh, had dual citizenship, and she goes back to St. John's, Newfoundland, and announces there after a few months that she's pregnant with Andrew's baby, and um, she is at this point fighting extradition. They're going through hearings and hearings and hearings about whether or not and how to get her back into the United States for to face this murder charge and in the meantime Andrew's parents David and Kate moved to St. John's Newfoundland to try to go through all the proper legal channels to get custody of this baby once Shirley goes to jail and she's arrested once and let out on bail and her psychiatrist pays for $65,000 of her bail yeah and he actually did end up uh, getting charged with 
misconduct yes. later. Um, so he pays $65,000 of her bail. And he they were actually friends from when she was in med school. So this was a personal relationship, too. And um, she had then got arrested again later. And then again got let out on bail. Um, didn't have to pay anything, by the way. Yeah, this time didn't have to pay anything. Just like super promise us like pinky promise you're yes. not gonna go anywhere <laughs> just yes and just that's on fine your good word just yeah don't don't go anywhere and she's already lied about everything and fled the country but no like she's not a threat don't worry about it and um she has the baby zachary is born july 18th of 2002 and unfortunately and tragically he's he never makes it to his second birthday she on august the 18th of 2003 tries to frame a guy that she'd started dating she'd gone out on just a couple dates with him his friends heard about the case like andrew's murder and said you know she's wanted in the u.s for the murder of her ex-boyfriend you might want to watch out and so he tells her i don't think it's a good idea to keep seeing each other and she drives to his house i just it's so gross though it's so gross but she obviously continues her like um mo of the very crazy stalking type situation so she drives to his house yes drives to his house um with zachary and she leaves pictures of her and zachary uh, at his door was it at his door i think like on his porch or and a used tampon and then she grounds up out of van she gives it to zachary and his formula she takes him herself and then she straps zachary to herself using a sweater and she jumps into the atlantic ocean and kills herself and murders zachary yeah so that is that yeah and david and kate then go on to really pursue activism to try to protect children whose parents have been charged with a violent crime especially premeditated murder uh to to really ensure that those people don't get out on bail surely never should have gotten out on bail um she she absolutely never should have been granted custody of zachary right she had extensive psychiatric history she had a stalking a previous stalking case like her previous boyfriend had reported her to the authorities many times we go into all that in the podcast um if you want to delve into it but there were definitely this was 100 percent 1000 percent preventable um and unfortunately the system that david and kate bagby put their faith in that was going to protect their grandson and they'd get to raise him failed them and it failed zachary and it failed everybody so they're trying to turn that into a way to protect other children in the future um it's a really it's a tragic story and then you're left with you know them fighting for you know to do something good for other people it's it's a really really tough case but if you want to hear the full case uh check us out we're on uh itunes spotify anywhere you listen to podcasts killer queens you can check us out on instagram at, at killer queens podcast we've got facebook yes please. and we put out daily sometimes twice daily hilarious memes oh yes and hopefully you're welcome that you will join us yes and and uh we look forward to to hanging out with you to that yeah. let's let's be best friends yeah Okay, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed our super awkward um, and more to come videos. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We'll get better at this. We're going to really try. (laughs) Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.